Daphne here from Blue Quarry, and in this video, I will share with you my favorite tools for creating dot mandalas, as well as the simple turntable support I designed that makes creating dot and hand sketch mandalas even easier to make. And by the way, the materials are extremely inexpensive or repurposed items that you will probably already have on hand right now. So let's get started. First, I'll start with a couple of items that you may want to go out and purchase. This is a plastic palette that I bought, and I really love it. The nice thing is it has these little paint wells that will hold the paint and uh, keep them sort of contained, rather than using just a flat paper plate where the, the paint tends to sort of get spread out, and it's harder to get your tool loaded, especially when you're doing the um, ball end tools, which I'll discuss in a little bit. Now, let me show you one of the reasons I love working with this little plastic palette. I used to either work on a paper plate that I could just throw away when I was done using it, or if I was working on a palette that I wanted to reuse, I had to make sure that I washed it before the acrylic dried, because acrylic is permanent once it dries. That's no longer a problem. With this palette, when I'm done, I can just walk away and let the paint dry right in the palette. Once it's dry, I can use a little tool or my fingernail just to lift the end of the acrylic paint and look how easy it pulls right off. Now in the areas where it's a little bit rougher, where maybe you don't have a continuous coverage of acrylic, it can be a little bit trickier to get it off, but there's a really easy solution for that too. I will just put a dollop of paint right on top when I'm ready to use the palette again, and the paint that's underneath is perfectly fine. It will not mix into your paint because it's dry and it's permanent now, and as long as you're not scraping it with your brush, you won't have a problem. When I allow that second layer to dry and I come back to peel it off, the first layer will come with it. And so I'm able to use it again and again without any problems whatsoever. I also recommend getting a package of wooden pencils. You want to get the unsharpened pencils, and that is because while the eraser end works great for making large circles, the other end, the wooden end with the lead in it, is great for making some smaller size circles, and you can adjust this by sharpening it. I use a hand sharpener, if you uh, turn it just a few turns, you'll get a, a circle that's slightly smaller than the eraser end. If you do a few more turns, it gets even smaller. And that way you have complete control over the size of the dots that you can make with that wooden end. So if you get a, a pack of pencils, you can vary the size of your dots from the size of the eraser all the way down to the smallest dots. The next thing that I found, which is one of my favorite tools for making really small, delicate dots, is this nail art stylus. Now this particular one is hard to find. It used to be available on Amazon, and as of right now, it's no longer available. But you can probably find this in your local drugstore, your local beauty supply store. Um, sometimes they come in a big kit with a whole bunch of other stuff. but just a simple stylus tool like this with the two ball ends is perfect. Now the last few tools I'm going to show you I made myself using straight pins and they also have the ball shaped ends which happen to be my favorite tool for working with acrylic paint making dot mandalas. If you wanna know the details on why and how to use them, uh, and you haven't already seen my beginner dot mandala video, I highly recommend you check it out. And you can see how much fun it is to work with these types of tools. I will include a link to that video, as well as more information on the items I purchased in the description box below. So here you see the three different straight pins that I found in my sewing kit 
and they have varying sizes of ball-shaped heads on the ends of them. The ones in the black box are the smallest of the three. The ones in that circular pattern with the rainbow colored heads, they are the next up in size, and the largest ones are called corsage pins. So I'm gonna pull out one of each size, and you wanna take careful note, look at the heads of the pins before you do this, make sure they're nice and round and smooth, and um, some of those pins actually vary in size even in the same package. So choose the ones that work for, you know, that give you the most variation in terms of size. Now you could choose to use these pins just as they are. Just hold them by the base and, and just use them to stamp. You just wanna be careful because obviously the ends are sharp and you can uh, poke yourself with them if you're not careful. You can always uh, just trim off the sharp ends and then use them like that. But I found that it's a little bit easier to put them on some sort of an extension. So there's lots of things that you could probably use for this. You could probably tape it onto a wooden dowel. You could use a cork, just something that you could just stick the pin directly into. That is the easiest method I found. If you don't happen to have a bunch of corks on hand to do that with, another option is to use a cotton swab. And that's what I did. I like that they're a little bit longer than the cork. It gives me a little bit more control. And if you like to dot with a cotton swab, then you actually have a two-sided tool there because you can use the cotton swab on the other end, or you could put two different size pins, one on either end, and have a double-sided tool. There's lots of options for you but the cotton swabs actually have a little hollow center and so the pins just slide nicely into that center making it really easy just to get them positioned in there the only problem is that they're kind of loose so i just put a dab of hot glue on the end of my cotton swab well, first I remove the excess cotton because you don't want all that cotton on there. So you can just pull off a lot of it. I leave a little bit at the end because the glue will adhere nicely to it and it provides more of a, a secure base for that glue to grab onto. But you just want to put a little dollop of it on the end, then push the pin in however uh, deep you want it to go into that end. And then I like taking like a flat surface and rolling my swab on that flat surface. I'm using the back of that paint palette, but you could use uh, like a sheet of parchment paper or, or something that's not going to melt um, from the heat of the, of the hot glue, just to smooth it out. And then once it's, it's cool enough, I use my fingers just to sort of press it on there and make sure it's nice and secure. Now, it doesn't look professional, but trust me, these work great. And if you have these pins and uh, cotton swabs laying around your house, you've got everything that you need to make really great dotting tools. So here are the three tools I made with my three different straight pin sizes. The last tip I have to offer is to show you how to make a turntable base. The purpose of the base is to provide a surface for your paper. So if you're working on something a little bit flimsier, like a piece of drawing paper or a piece of watercolor paper, this provides a surface for you to temporarily tape it to. And it also provides a way to rotate your work instead of having to move your hand around the surface of the paper. And it makes the process even that much easier. So I like to start with a piece of cardboard and 
I have some that I purchased for making my book covers, but you could also use the back support material on a pad of watercolor paper. Really any kind of cardboard that you have will probably do. Now I like to size mine to seven inches by seven inches. You definitely want it to be square. If your cardboard is thin enough, you can cut it with a regular pair of scissors. If it's heavier, you might need a utility knife and a straight edge. And you just wanna make sure that the size that you choose is a little bit larger than your paper so that you have room to secure to it. The next step would be to put a couple of coats of acrylic paint on both the front and back surfaces just to seal the cardboard. Allow that to dry completely and then draw two diagonal lines across your board. So you wanna line your straight edge up with the corners and draw a nice dark line. Now I'm using a pencil, but I would highly recommend using a black marker instead. That way you're not gonna get any smearing. And those two diagonal lines do two things. They mark the center of your board, which is important because that will become your pivot point. And they provide a guideline so that when you're placing your watercolor paper on the board, you, know, you can get it perfectly centered. So the next step is to poke a little hole through the center of your board and I actually came up with two different methods of doing this. My first thought was to use just a regular thumbtack and to secure that to my work surface. So I just grabbed some painter's tape, you can use masking tape, really any kind of tape would work. And I have the thumbtack with the pointy side facing up and you just want to sort of pop the tape on top of that with the pointy end poking through and I just put two pieces of tape there to make it nice and secure and as smooth as possible on the surface. And then I just took my board and I aligned it with that center hole and popped it down on the thumbtack. Now, that's this is sort of the trickiest part is getting that hole to line up with the thumbtack and I did have a little mishap the first time I used this and I accidentally poked um, a second hole through my cardboard, not even just my cardboard, but also through my work piece, which I wasn't happy with. Um, so you have to be really careful with that. The other problem is that you do end up with a hole in your work piece, which isn't a big problem because if you're using a compass, you probably will have a little bit of a a hole in there from the compass itself. But I did end up coming up with another method that I think is better and I will show you that next. So I'm starting out with one of my small straight pins and I have a cutting tool that I got from my garage. It's a heavy duty cutter and I also have goggles on. You wanna make sure you're protecting your eyes if you're doing this. And I am cutting that pin really close to the head. I left just enough so that I can poke it through my support without it poking all the way through. And that'll just help me to get everything centered. Next, I take my glue gun. I put a tiny little bead of glue in the center where that hole is. And very carefully, I poke the little end of that through the hole. Now this took me about four tries <laughs> before I finally got it in there. You have to work kind of quickly. You have to work before the glue hardens and get it nice and centered. An alternative would be just to find a little seed bead, something small and round that you can just glue in the approximate center location. You don't need to have that little pin there to poke through, it's not necessary. But as you can see, it worked out pretty well. So with this method, I do not need to have a hole in my watercolor paper in order to get it 
onto the board to line it up all I need to do is align the corners with that those diagonal guidelines that I put on there and put a few little pieces of washi tape to secure it down this will allow me to rotate my workpiece rather than having to rotate my hand around the workpiece and it'll allow me to make cleaner more consistent lines and curves and dots and whatever shapes I put on here making the whole process even easier than it already was I really hope you enjoyed this video if you did please follow me give me a thumbs up leave a comment and check out my website bluequarry.com